Let's talk about Kender. Famous as the fearless, curious, and sticky-fingered halfling analogs of the Dragonlance setting, Kender originate from, as the story goes, gnomes that were transformed by the Great Gem of Gargath, which split gnomes into the wealth-focused dwarves and the wonder-focused Kender. Welcome to the Wintry Wyvern, by the way. We're talking about this because Wizards of the Coast released the Heroes of Kryn under Tharkana, which carries a new promise of Kender as a player race in 5th edition. People have mixed responses. Kender are famous for their fearlessness, sharp smack talk, and most of all, their tendencies towards kleptomania. In the Dragonlance campaign setting book from back in 2003, Kender were written with no concept of personal possessions or boundaries, stealing things to sate their bottomless curiosity rather than taking things of value from both enemies and allies alike. Bad manner players would use that lore as an excuse to steal from party members and be generally frustrating. Hiding behind the age-old excuse, it's what my character would do. Since then, Kender have gained a pretty poor reputation as potential team members. So with that context, how did Watsi attempt to remedy a historically frustrating race? Well, like this. It's got the basics, humanoid, small, 30 feet move speed. As of Monsters of the Multiverse released this year, nobody has 25 feet move speed anymore, because let's be honest, 30 feet is just more fun. We'll start with Brave, which you might recognize from the Halfling stat block. This will always be really good because the Frightened Condition appears at every level of play. Kender Aces is the first unique ability. The flavor text of Kender have retconned their penchant to steal, with magical pockets that can materialize trinkets and things out of thin air. The innate curiosity of a Kender is now magically charged, and no one knows where these trinkets come from, not even the Kender. This sidesteps the touchy history of swiping from people's pockets and replaces habitual robberies with a whimsical hammer space, chock full of goofy bobbles and doodads. Okay, so how does it play out? In Kender Aces, as a bonus action, you reach into this pocket dimension and pull out something unpredictable. Roll a d6 and see what you get. The first roll is 5d6 gold coins, averaging to about 17 gold pieces. Now everything from this pocket disappears in an hour, so no, you can't slowly build wealth over weeks and months, but then the question becomes, where do you spend it? Any shopkeeper tricked by your coins that glimmer, by the way, will never let you back into their shop. Seems like a guaranteed way to piss someone off, which seems counterintuitive to the new direction of the Kender. Rolling a 2 gives you a light, simple weapon. These are the 5 you can pull, which isn't bad, but if this is essential at all to your build, you might as well have one already. Rolling a 3 is adventuring gear, weighing less than 1 pound, worth less than 1 gold, from the player's handbook. Here's the whole list by the way, which I'd recommend having on hand if you let anyone play this race. The list is nice, nothing too special here, and a creative player should be able to play up what to use the gear for during the hour they have it. A 4 gets you one of a hundred random trinkets from the PHP table. Now these are fun. Some are truly wild like a vial of dragon's blood. And most are silly enough to turn a situation sideways. Personally, I wish this was the only thing you could roll on Kender Aces because it's got so much personality compared to all the other options. 5 is a grappling hook or crowbar. So if you really need one of these, this table shows you the odds of rolling a 5 at least once if you burn all your remaining Kender Aces. This is the most likely to be useful, but of course, something you probably should already have. And rolling a 6 gets you a tool from the PHB worth 10 gold or less. Here's the list. Although these are worth the most, they're kind of useless without proficiency. Fun fact, gaming sets and instruments are on this specific tool table, so they count as possible pulls. Good to know. Looking at the full list, 9 times out of 10 you're going to be using this trait for jokes and laughs, and maybe once in a blue moon you'll pull out exactly what you need. I kind of wish this was taken from the Kender and just made into an item that anyone could use, which would give the Kender some design space for more practical things. Now, this isn't the first time we've seen the Kender in 5e. Way back in 2013, the Kender was included in a set of races during the D&D Next playtest, which would eventually become 5th edition. This one had a feature called Kender Pockets, which basically gave you a 1 in 4 chance of accidentally picking up exactly what you need. On a failure, you can't search for what you're looking for again until you spend a whole day in the town or city, presumably to maybe absentmindedly pick one up. This one leans more, of course, into the old perception of Kender, one that this new UA is trying to avoid. Overall, Kender Aces is fun. I do like the hammer space as Watsi's answer for the complaints. More silly than practical, but gets a pass from me. Last feature is Taunt. Kender have always been famous for their smack talk. As a bonus action, you can throw some insults at a creature that can hear and understand you within 60 feet. 
If they fail the whiz save, they get disadvantage on all their attacks till your next turn. You can use this a number of times equal to your PB per long rest. This has some highs and lows, it's better than Vicious Mockery the Cantrip, in that it's a bonus action and can affect multiple attacks if the enemy has multiple attacks, but weaker in that it's got finite uses, deals no damage, and the creature has to understand you. Unless you've got speak with animals or tongues running, you'll likely have problems using this on beasts, undead, elemental, oozes, and so on. Also, it scales with charisma, so unless you invest in that stat, the DC falls off a cliff at higher tiers. At the end of the day, it's situational and lets whatever character you play get a bit of that classic bardic flavor. All in all, I think that a lot of people are going to be glad the Kenders back. The bad reputation comes almost entirely from bad players, and Kender are much beloved by readers of the Dragonlance novels. As long as you lean into the good points of Kender, their wonder and wanderlust, their bravery and fierce friendship, you'll realize just like the rest of their party that Kender has everything it takes to be the world's next hero. That's all for now, but we'll check out the rest of the UA soon enough. If you want to hear a full 2 hour read through and breakdown of that UA, I've uploaded the stream of that to this channel. If you want all the tables of the Kender Aces list I showed in this video, I've got that in the description below. We'll meet again soon, but until then, may your pockets always be bottomless, your mischief always well-meaning, and above all, stay frosty.